Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. The holiday season is officially here, and even if you don't celebrate Christmas, are you going to treat yourself to some tech gadgetry of sorts? Something that you've had your eye on all year, maybe. If you have, I want to hear about it. So please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com or send me a quick cheeky tweet at Neil C. Hughes. But as much as I'd love to talk about stuff like that all day long, I do have a guest waiting to join us. Due to an explosion of data, companies are in need of more data professionals fast. Why? Because their needs have changed. So a company called Measure Match is pairing freelancers and and small to mid-sized agencies with businesses all over the world, offering flexible short-term contracts. But I wanted to explore how they're aiming to transform the industry with technology. Now, James Sandoval, he's the founder and has over 20 years of experience in the data and tech industry. So I invited him on the show today to find out more about his story. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to London so we can speak with James Sandoval from Measure Match. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Certainly, Neil. Yeah, thank you for having me as your guest. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. So my name is James Sandoval. I am the founder and CEO of a, an on-demand professional services marketplace called Measure Match. Uh, we're based in East London in the WeWork near London Fields, which um, is just a 10-minute walk away from where I live near Victoria Park with my wife, Valeria, and our kids. The business that I've been building for the last almost three years, well, it'll be three years in April next year, at least that's when the idea formed three years ago, um, is, you know, it's, it's a two-sided on-demand professional services marketplace. It's a, it's a little bit of a word salad, but what that means is that we're, we're enabling the buying and selling of professional services, specifically technology and data services, and the technology bit needs a little bit of clarification um, in that the technology services are really software systems, implementation, configuration, systems, integrations, troubleshooting types of services that businesses increasingly need because the software systems that they adopt, a lot of its SaaS software is changing incredibly fast and those organizations just can't keep up. And so our platform really makes it incredibly easy for businesses to tap into a, a global network of independent consultants and consultancies um, across 50 plus countries uh, to easily onboard uh, an individual or a small team to, to get really important software systems, data and analytics work done really fast. Now, you guys were founded in May 2016, and Mesomatch is an award-winning on-demand technology and data professional services marketplace ecosystem, solving marketing, commerce, and customer experience business needs incredibly fast. But can you just set the scene a little and tell me more about the kind of problems that you solve with Mesomatch, but also what put you on this journey? Good, good question. Nicely phrased. And you've touched on all of the core elements of what we're doing. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so we're, uh, you know, really specifically clients can come in. And clients, by the way, are marketing leaders, commerce leaders, analytics, product, HR, um, and lots of agencies will come into the, the Measure Match marketplace on, on the demand side and, uh, and ask for things like uh, help to advance the use of Adobe Analytics or Google Analytics or many of the other analytics systems that are out there. Um, or a marketing performance dashboard needs to be set up and configured, um, or it could be uh, some kind of assistance for uh, some kind of personalization initiative that needs to be deployed or revamped across maybe a number of different commerce websites um, or content websites even. Uh, so it, it kind of runs the gamut. We do have an orientation to solve for again, marketing, commerce, and customer experience business needs, but one way to think about what we're doing is we're, you know, we're aggregating on the supply side a global network of independent consultants and consultancies that kind of span the, the gamut, the range of, of you know, Scott Brinker's marketing technology ecosystem. Um, there's a lot of great software out there, but organizations are struggling to find the people to really derive the value 
from those software systems and of course the data that those systems collect. And what caught my eye as well as a freelancer is Measure Match pairs freelancers and small mid-sized agencies with businesses all over the world, essentially offering flexible short-term contracts. But what is it that makes mm-hmm. you guys different from all the other solutions out there? Yeah, great question. So we, we get that one a lot, uh, certainly from, uh, from prospective investors. Um, so there are quite a few things. Uh, so it, foundationally, though, it's, it's probably worth just noting up front that you know, the Measure Match marketplace platform is a lot like any other um, m- you know, marketplace set of dynamics, right? So we're just enabling the buying and selling, uh, not of products, but of services. Um, but, uh, but we do have you know, a vertical orientation to solve for tech and data needs at businesses. Um, and then there's this kind of starting point for us, which is marketing and commerce stuff. That, you know, there's no software systems and data, of course. Um, but there are other nuances that I think that are probably worth uh, describing to some degree. You know, we're, we're, we're designing the marketplace to be, you know, carefully structured so that we're not creating an environment where pricing is a race to the bottom. So we've heard this a lot from other, uh, from consultants that are on our marketplace who participated in other environments where pricing is really, really challenging. They can't quite get the rates that they would uh, that they, they think they should earn, and they probably should earn. Um, so, for example, we've taken the decision not to publish day rates or hourly rates on, in Measure Match experts' profiles. So when a client comes into the Measure Match marketplace, she or he will see um, Measure Match experts, again, independent consultants or consultancies, um, feature their skills and their experience and the specific software systems or or data process management skills that they have before a price comes into the picture. And that's that's critically important because if a price is in the picture, that will be exactly where clients will go first. They will compare on price and they will go, they will continue to go lower and lower. And, uh, and that's going to be really challenging for independent consultants and consultancies to grow their businesses. So if they can't win on that basis, then, then we certainly can't win, and other marketplaces are going to struggle too. So, so we're making a point of uh, ensuring that clients are presented with amazing skills when they come into the platform. And, what, and the other way that we're doing this is that we interview all of the relevant experts that apply to participate in our marketplace. So right now, and we only just recently did an analysis because we've just been racing along to build the software for our platform, Only about 5% of applicants are invited to create a profile, and that is after we interview these individuals or these agency consultancy leaders who, you know, are stepping in to say, yeah, you know, we'd like to play ball. We'd like to participate in the way that you're designing this particular marketplace. We have the right skills. And so um, right now, around 5% are invited to participate. So it's, it's a pretty strict process. To, uh, to come in. And something else caught that caught my eye was at the prestigious technology and digital event DMEXCO, which I believe attracts something like 50,000 attendees. The DMEXCO and Unilever Foundry Startup Hatch showcased the very best entrepreneurs who had the opportunity to pitch their cutting edge innovations live to a panel of industry experts. And I believe that you scooped a pretty big award there. So can you tell me a little bit more about that event and the feeling that you had when they read out your name in front of those 50,000 attendees? I mean, did you have a speech prepared? Uh, yeah, great, great question. Um, I, I should probably clarify that we, we certainly had a, a, a number of attendees. I'm not sure how many were in the audience at the time, but yeah. um, certainly not the full 50,000. But uh, boy, uh, I'd like to think that the, you know, the message reached as many as, as that, 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 that type of a number. Um, but um, yeah, so we prepared a little bit of a speech. It was a, it was a pitch, but it was done literally in the hours before we had the, uh, the opportunity to get on stage. It was a bit of a process. We had to pitch earlier in the day as a part of, a, of an initial round, and we, we, we won our component there. Uh, which was which was amazing. I was incredibly nervous, but uh, we know our story. We know kind of everything about what we've been doing. We've been living and breathing it for the better part of two years, um, and what we're building is is substantial. It's transformative. We really are on a path to transform the way 
professional services are sourced and delivered, um, certainly tech and data professional services, um, globally. And we're beginning to transact across, uh, across borders. And so that's getting incredibly ex- uh, ex- exciting too. But the, the opportunity to pitch in Cologne as a part of this New Mexico Unilever Foundry Startup Hatch competition was amazing. And to be, um, you know, crowned the winner was phenomenal. Um, we also got uh, 15,000 euros of prize money, which, which helps us, of course, a lot. That's about a month's worth of software development costs. Um, so we were, um, yeah, super thrilled. And what really stands out for me is, is your passion at Measure Match around the globalization of both talent and technology that is now freeing up companies so they can experiment in actually new ways to fill critical skills gaps without staying, while also staying lean. I mean, can you expand on that mindset and why it's always been so important to you? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, it, it comes from my services background. So I um, I did 10 years in digital marketing services agencies. Um, I started in Seattle um, with a what was a small uh, independent digital media planning and buying agency called Avenue A. Um, became something of a behemoth called uh, Avenue A Razorfish eventually, and then a part of the Aquantive group of companies that was acquired by Microsoft. I believe it was in 2007 pretty significant acquisition of $6.2 billion. It was, it was enormous. So that was my first real interesting and substantial opportunity to be a part of a services organization, a technology organization, and to see that, you know, in a very entrepreneurial environment, go on to become something incredibly successful. Um, that, was, that was amazing. And I did more of that over the next seven years, six or seven, eight years or so. So I went from Seattle to London. I did another eight years of digital media agency work, hop, skipped and and jumped around quite a bit. Um, I'm I'm the kind of guy who gets bored pretty quickly. Uh, So um, so my 10 years of digital media agency services work um, was really, is really foundational and very much, you know, drove me to become the entrepreneurial guy that I've been for the last 10 years um, but Measure Match really comes from that time. So I loved to work with, you know, ambitious clients who were, you know, adopting digital technologies, investing heavily into digital media, because I was doing digital media planning and buying work, again, between 1999 and 2008. So pretty early period uh, during the, you know, the formation of what is now a, an enormous digital marketing services and digital media landscape. Well, let's circle back. So the, the thing that really inspires me now in the business that I'm building today um, is, again, services-oriented. It's about the people. It's about the people that, that we interview. So when I talk with independent consultants or the leaders of small to mid-sized agencies, you know, they're entrepreneurial. They're hungry. They're good. They're problem solvers. They're parents. Um, who need a little bit more flexibility in the way that they, you know, run their lives. And so they're choosing to be uh, independent. They're choosing to go out and strike out on their own after maybe having done five or 10 or 15 years of work in corporates or in other agencies or whatever the case may be. So, so um, that, that drives me probably the most. I love the idea that we can build a platform that helps to support the growth of these independent entrepreneurs these independent, you know, solo practitioners. Um, And, you know, that's incredibly rewarding. Now, we do have a lot of startup founders and indeed business leaders listening to this show. And like you, I love how technology is tearing down geographical barriers and enabling the global community to just collaborate seamlessly. But without getting too political, I'm going to have to mention the B word here, which is probably a sore point for both Mm. of us. But I mean, how does Brexit fit into that vision and that ethos that you have? And how will it bring challenges and opportunities or or even both at Measure Match? That's a good question. So I've I've been uh, laboring a little bit over the whole Brexit development for some time. Um, And it probably won't be a surprise. You know, I'm not a Brit. I'm not from these parts. Um, although I've you know, very much established a home and built a few companies here so far. This one is by far my largest endeavor. Um, Brexit, for me, is really problematic. It, you know, it's, it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's a mistake uh, on the part of 
you know, half of the British people who felt like they needed to make a simple black and white decision to exit out of the European Union. I think that that was that was wrong to even run a referendum, I'll be honest. Um, but, you know, we're we're in a, a situation now which is uh, highly fraught and very complex and just full of uncertainty. And I think that's the thing that makes me most nervous. Uh, uh, about where the economy goes next. Um, and I can't help that it, 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 it's probably a little dark. Uh, it's a little negative with regards to where we go next. I'm hopeful. I'm always generally glass half full. So I'd like to think that, you know, the, the, you know, the incredible, um, uh, just the nature of this economy, the flexibility, the entrepreneurial um, you know, uh, threads that r- have run through it for, you know, decades and hundreds of years will eventually get us out to a better place. But I think over the course of the next, I'd like to think, couple of years, three, five, ten years, perhaps, things might be really challenging. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they won't be. Um, but, um, yeah, I think Brexit is, is a tough one. To how do, you know, how does it affect our business right now? The biggest challenge, I think, is around fundraising. So investors, I think, are being very, very cautious. Uh, Of course, they're going to be very cautious with a business like ours because we've not yet necessarily fully proven the model. And it will take a couple of years more before we really get there. So that's just naturally challenging. But on top of that, Brexit doesn't really help. Um, And especially even just yesterday, Theresa May's choice to delay the vote on the Commons is, uh, is not helpful either. Um, so I, you know, you know, I'm hoping for the best. I really don't like where we are right now. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. Now, the Measure Match mm. platform provides access to over 2,000 consultants to small to mid-sized agencies over 40 different countries that all specialise in tech, data and analytics solutions, engineering, all available for flexible short-term contracts. But do you have any use cases or stories from your clients that you can share that will just help people listening visualise the scale of your vision? Sure, sure thing. Yeah, so there are a few case studies that are featured on the website. Um, and the, the story that, you know, I typically tell is um, about one of our first client commitments, um, which is, I think, a perfect example of what's possible. And it, and it does scale into lots of different opportunities. So, you know, it was around this time last year when the head of e-commerce for an, a, an educational technology company called Cano, also based in the East End, came to us actually through the, the, the former chief marketing officer, someone I know, actually. So there's a bit of an early relationship there, um, but came to us and said, hey, you know, we, we have some pretty important data collection challenges across multiple e-commerce platforms that we need to solve for really fast, really fast, meaning that within the next few weeks, Black Friday and Cyber Monday and the Christmas period is coming up. And that period represents, you know, I think the majority of the revenue for the business for the year. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a retailer for all intents and purposes. And we really just need to get, you know, the, the really is Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, I think some other related systems data collection work fixed. Uh, there's some major holes that need to be uh, solved for. Um, in advance of this really important sales period, because if we don't, then we're going to lose out on opportunities to well, report correctly to leadership, to optimize um, you know, our marketing investments, and, and a bunch of other things. Um, and there was also a requirement for some documentation to be written and left behind for the team, too. So, so that, that, was the, that was the requirement. That was essentially the brief that came into our platform. Um, and like we do with all clients today, because we want to make certain that the briefs are written well, that they're clear and they're relevant for the independent experts, independent experts on our, uh, on our platform. Um, we had a call with Stephanie, Stephanie Bales is her name. Um, so Stephanie and I, and, and Tom, a co-founder, we had a chat together. Um, and, uh, so we, we, you know, we, we went through a few of the details. We massaged the brief a little bit. And we also spoke about, um, Stephanie's requirement to have someone in the business, so on site versus someone who would work remotely. And we had advised that it's better to select the option in the brief in our platform 
that allows for a consultant to provide the services on site or remotely, because that would open up a lot more expressions of interest and uh, proposals that would get submitted to Stephanie. So um, she took our advice. She selected that middle option to allow for um, experts uh, who, who would you know, potentially provide, be providing services remotely to express interest as well. And um, the long and short of it is that so Stephanie ended up selecting a consultant, which is great, booked a contract. That consultant, however, worked remotely for the entire duration of the engagement, so differently than what she'd really wanted. But it was a five-star experience, and the feedback that she gave was was a glowing review of you know of of a you know a delightful uh, I think it was a week long period during which the services were provided and the engagement was done and and the the, the you know the written documentation was provided. So um, that's the kind of thing that we're looking to do. You know, to the tune of hundreds and thousands of contracts. Um, over the course of you know the coming years, and uh, we're at this point now, a little bit over two years into the development of the platform, and we are so ready for 2019. Um, we're we're uh, yeah we're incredibly excited to uh, to move into uh, to Q1 next year and grow uh, really substantially, and then push for scale in 2020. And if we just zoom out just for a moment, can you also tell me about how you carefully designed Measure Match to actually eliminate risk, increase transparency and enable transformative value creation for all parties? Because that seems to be the foundation of what you you set out to achieve as well, doesn't it? it? That's right. Yeah. So there are a few things. I touched on the interview process that we have or the kind of screening, the vetting of the interview process to ensure that the Measure Match experts on the supply side of our platform are you know, at the top of their game. They're really good. Um, they're great communicators. So we look for communication is probably the, the, the number one thing that we look for to do it, to ensure that the service providers can persuasively and clearly communicate what they can do, how they can do it, when, and so on and so forth. So communication is core, um, but that interview process is thorough. And as I mentioned earlier, only about 5% of applicants are invited to create uh, and, and maintain profiles and participate in the marketplace. Um, the transparency is really kind of simple in that um, we're clear about the, the commercial structure. So right now, the way that we make money is we keep 15%. That's one five percent of the contract value from the supply side, meaning that if a contract is worth, say, 10,000 U.S. dollars or 10,000 euros, currently the, the platform is, is uh, denominated in three currencies, U.S. dollar, euro, and, and British pound, um, then we will keep uh, 1,500 of, of that uh, contract value. So that's clear. We make that clear on both sides of the platform. So both parties are clearly aware of what they're stepping into. And on the supply side, you know, they can negotiate accordingly to, to ensure that they're getting compensated um, uh, fairly. Um, and the transformative value, we think that it's going to happen in a couple of different ways. One is there are very few places where businesses can go today to find an organized, um, centralized, and you know, clearly structured and growing group of independent consultants, consultancies to provide software systems, you know, engineering, configuration, you know, and troubleshooting types of work and all of the related data and data science work too, in one place. There are very few places to go for that. Um, they can go to an Accenture or they can go to a small, mid-sized consultancy that might be local and found on a word of mouth basis. But, you know, through the web, there are very few places and ours is really unique. Um, and, um, and we're developing some features and functionality that are going to make it incredibly easy for, again, marketing leaders, commerce leaders, analytics leaders to find independent consultants, consultancies to provide services because, um, because we have some pretty amazing data, thankfully, to do it. So Technographic Match is our latest. Um, extension or product development that uh, clients can use, and it's available as an early beta thing to play with right now, Technographic Match. And um, what clients can basically enter the name of their own business. And what we do is we take a look at the systems that their business is currently using. 
their business currently has deployed X number of marketing technology systems, analytic systems. This is across their websites. And what we do is we will align those systems to the actual system skills that are present in Measure Match experts' profiles. Um, and so we just immediately, within you know seconds, a client can see Measure Match experts that are directly aligned to the very software systems that their business has uh, deployed today. And uh, in early next year, that will extend to software systems that a business has deployed, not just through their website, but also internally. And that requires um, a number of additional data sets, but we're working on integrating those today. Um, and so, as you can imagine, as we layer in some intelligence, including um, lots of algorithmic work, um, we will be a lot more um, specific and accurate in the way that we present and recommend expertise to each client that comes into, into the platform. So that's pretty unique stuff. So with over 20 years of experience in the data and tech industry, I'm curious, I mean, what are the biggest changes that you've personally seen over the years and how are you planning to further transform the industry as a result of those lessons that you've learned? Yeah, uh, great, great question. Um, yeah, first, the first thing that stands out is it's, it's amazing that it's been 20 years. Yeah. That's, um, that's, a, that's a long time. Um, I, I, I tend to think of it as two sets of 10 years, in fact, because it was 10 years of you know, digital media planning and buying agency work. And the last 10 years has been all entrepreneurial, just spaghetti, it feels like, but, um, but with, a, with, a, with a clear kind of dovetailing of lots of different uh, experience, certainly from my, my agency days. So the, the number one thing, uh, the biggest change, I guess, or the thing that stands out for me most is that people matter, that human skills will remain central to the, to the successes and failures that organizations realize across their kind of tech and data initiatives and evolutions. Um, there's a lot of talk about AI. AI is amazing. Um, uh, you know, I think that AI will certainly play a really incredible role in the way that we live our lives and we experience um, commerce and lots of things. But um, first and foremost, I'm a big believer that people matter and human skills are going to be central, certainly to the way that businesses um, benefit from, you know, the deployment and enhancement and integration of software into their businesses and, um, and all of the value derivatives that they realize um, because the software that they deploy is going to collect a lot of, a lot of business information. So, um, yeah, so that's my North Star. It's very people-centric. Um, human skill centric, um, and uh, and I, I suppose I'll kind of wrap up on this, which is that technology changes fast. Software systems are evolving incredibly quickly, and the intelligence through uh, algorithmic work and uh, AI and who knows what comes next is going to make that change happen even more quickly. But people generally are stay are are the same, are staying kind of staying the same for now anyway. Um, until that technology is really embedded, in, I think, in our b minds and bodies. But that's going to take another several decades, I think. But people are, are, are pretty constant, meaning that we're learning at the same path, same rate, uh, that is. And um, we can only kind of do so much. Um, and, uh, and businesses are people-driven. Um, and in order for businesses to operate more quickly, they need to be more flexible. And in order to be more flexible, one of the ways to do that is to take advantage of uh, the you know this global liquid on-demand workforce that is growing, and it's growing because of technology. Amazingly, of course, um, there are so many free tools and low-cost tools and communications facilities, whether it's Skype or WhatsApp or Zoom, um, or even just regular phone calls are next to free these days. Um, that make it so easy to work and to live and to play from anywhere that um, we're going to see more and more amazingly highly skilled individuals work independently and then, of course, form small to mid-sized companies. Um, a lot of them will be providing technology and data services, we hope. And so that's going to be really transformative, and we're, you know, we're happy to be a part of that change. 
Well, I'm sure a lot of the words that you've spoken today is going to resonate to a lot of people listening. So before I let you go, can I just ask that you remind the listeners of where they can find uh, Measure Match online and also contact your team if they've got any questions at all? Sure thing. Yeah, so uh, well, measurematch.com is the website. Um, I can be found on LinkedIn, uh, so just look for Measure Match or look for James Sandoval. Um, I'm on Twitter, but not as much as I probably should be. My handle is Check Your Fuel. That's Check Your Fuel uh, as one word. Check Your Fuel. Uh, it's been like that for a good ten plus years. Um, and you know, any questions, of course, can be submitted through the website. Um, there's a little chat bot facility there that, that we, we, you know, we're pinged every day through that, and we're happy to answer questions uh, at any time. Fantastic. Well, I love that you've got 20 years experience and in that time that you've seen so much tech transformation and disruption in business. But at the end of all that, it's still the people aspect that excites you. And that's so telling about what you stand for and indeed what Measure Match stands for. So a big thank you for coming on and sharing that story with me today. Yeah, well, thank you, Neil. That, that was a great question. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks a lot. Measure Match is an on-demand professional service marketplace ecosystem. And their end-to-end platform enables direct, seamless and flexible access to a global liquid workforce of amazing independent system engineers and data management, data engineering, and data science pros to get important marketing, commerce, and customer experience project work done fast. And it is okay to comparatively think of Uber or Airbnb or Helpling or TaskRabbit because they all match supply with demand in a similar manner, all the way through contract management, payment process, ratings, and feedback. But I think that is where the comparison ends. Because Measure Match is on a mission to forever change the way businesses access and benefit from data, analytics and technology, professional services and talent, all on demand. If we strip it all back, Measure Match is simply helping every organisation to be more successful in a digital world. But that's just my takeaway. What did you take away from today's conversation? Please keep that feedback coming my way. You can send me an email, techblogwriter at outlook.com, a tweet at Neil C. Hughes. And of course, don't forget to visit my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. And if you're feeling incredibly generous, caring and in a sharing mood during the holiday season, why not take two minutes out of your time to give a quick rating and review of this podcast on whatever platform you listen to the show. But I'm afraid that's it again. We're out of time. Where does it keep going? But I do have another episode and another great guest lined up for you tomorrow. So thanks for listening as always. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.